under starters orders now are we ready are we steady we're going to go racing here at the circuit of the americas but creeping at the back of the grid and we're underway great start from steel great start and they are nose to tail that's baumgartner up into second place is he going to be able to hold that around the left hander yes he is so oh and he climbs him and he's all over him does Baumgartner go over the number nine of Runyon Jr. And that gives a fantastic opportunity for Steele to streak ahead. And he's going to pull away. And we got one car that was spun out there. Hopefully he can get turned around at the hairpin and back into the fray. But wow, that was quite an interesting start. They all again trying to cram into that very narrow dirt section and get through that hairpin. And we saw the contact occur there. Baumgartner making a bit of a push, but he's holding in third position. You can see the damage on the front of the bodywork, but it won't affect the chassis. Oh, that was a last-minute flick to the left-hand side, ball. Otherwise, he was going to go into the wall. Right in there. It was a good save at the end, and we saw a couple of guys take the joker on the inside, and they made the passes, and uh, they're going to get to keep those positions until, of course, the other drivers take the joker, too, maybe try and take it back. We've got Lopez in first and Steele second with Harlan third, and oh, all sideways off the jump and spinning out. So Lopez leading this one after he took the joker on that last lap. There we have Ari Leyendijk Jr. with the blue front to his number 25 truck, squealing those tires. Here is Lopez. Well, you can tell he's from Mexico. Look at those colors. Steele takes the shortcut. He slots into second place. Then next over the line, we are going to get, is it going to be Harlan? Yes, it is. But some 3.8 seconds back of the leader, Lopez. You can see him trying to get around that hairpin. It's really tricky. There's a big mound there in the center of it, and that tends to bicycle the trucks, putting them up on two wheels. So they've got to be kind of tippy-toe around that thing. Be really careful while trying to line up the jump. But look at these guys. They're getting very racy back there, trying to get up the inside. And uh, let's see if he gets it done. Nope, couldn't quite do it. And almost made it through. A little bit of contact there as they come through. they got a little bit of jump right here. Harlan in the yellow truck. Number 77, the white one. That's Brooks. As they go around the outside, Nick Baumgartner, he takes the joker, and he really makes some space up onto those guys. Oh, and they go dive the inside. Oh, that's a tremendous opportunity for Baumgartner. He's trying to put the power to the ground. No traction control, and he's mowing the bales. He's mowing, and Baumgartner could go through, and he's just about going to do it. Not quite. Brooks has a moment. Baumgartner makes two positions in a couple of corners. Wow, that was impressive stuff, and it was almost self-inflicted from the guys in front, but Baumgartner was just poised to take advantage of that, and absolutely he did. Great racing, great racing. He's got his toe in as Baumgartner. He's, he's used to X Games gold, but that's in the Winter Olympics. The 32-year-old, he had snowboard cross gold in 2011. He's been to the Olympics representing the USA twice in snowboard cross. He's done six of these stadium super truck races so far. And for more on Nick, Jamie's got more. Well, Toby, by the looks of it, it doesn't, you wouldn't think that it's been a year since he's actually raced a truck or anything of any sort. So he told me when he got here, he had to brush the rust off. He has a driving coach. He sent video from practice to his coach in Phoenix. He sent him a bunch of notes of all the things he was doing wrong. He fixed him this morning in qualifying and came out qualified fourth. His confidence is up. Paul, that's brilliant, and wonders of technology doing driver coaching remotely. Yeah, it shows you what can be done these days with technology. That's pretty fantastic. And obviously, the coach was right on the money watching those videos because Baumgartner's a changed man today. And uh, he's been shot out of a cannon. Look at this racing we've got going on here. It's not over. And the 77 going right back by him again. Jarrett Brooks going through through the quick right-hander. We've seen so many different lines through that quick right-hander on uh, the Grand Prix circuit onto the tarmac. But with our half-mile course, it gives these guys an opportunity, some to slide, some to struggle with the understeer. But Nim, Nick Baumgartner, look at him through that clear visor on the left-hand side as we're riding on board with him. He's hardly blinking. Yeah, Brooks got pretty sideways there. We can see if Baumgartner's going to take advantage and maybe close up a little bit. Remember, the top eight are going to transfer, but they're all fighting right now for starting positions in the final. Well, Steele has a seven-second lead. He is very safe at advancing. They're lifting an inside front. I just love it like that. It is pure fever to see a truck sliding through a corner like that. Yeah, it looks amazing. And it's something with the setup that these guys can do where they can run the trucks very soft and gain a little bit of traction but be lifting wheels a lot on the asphalt. Or they can go with a stiffer setup which has the truck rolling a little bit less but it has a little bit less grip in the dirt. Now then, uh, we haven't seen much from Aptali Lopez. Here he is, though, with 
his leading truck. Not a mark on it compared with some of the other ones. The number 19, no problem at all as he takes the jump again. Another couple of laps for him to tick off. Well, if he wasn't in the driving groove after doing the Baja 500 yesterday, nobody would. Yeah, he's he's very, very dialed in. And, and we've got uh, Steele right behind him, so it's not quite over yet. These guys are quite close. And we could see, see a race in the finish. We've still got another lap to go after this. And uh, Scotty Steele at just 16 years old there in second place. That means that it is, again, the top three all teenagers. My goodness me. Paul, it's all over for us, isn't it? I think, I think it is. <laughs> I think it is. It's the final lap. It's almost all over for them. Let's see if they can hang on. <laughs> well, they, uh, as they see the white flag, just one more lap to go. And a steady, cool, calm head for all of these top eight who will advance to the final. But for Atali Lopez leading Scotty Steele in second place. And then Jared Brooks, another teenager in third position. These really are some revelations. We've got some very young riders in, you know, in, in, in MotoGP Grand Prix racing, but for young drivers such as this, against the experienced BJ Baldwins and Robbie Gordons of this world to be so cool under pressure, it really is something else for the future. As he sees the checkered flag, Lopez wins the heat brilliantly ahead of Steele. We wait for third place to come through. Yes, it is Brooks taking that third position. And a great drive from Nick Baumgartner with the number 12 to take fourth place. You can't see the smile, but I'm sure I could see a twinkle in his eye through that visor. Fourth position for him ahead of Harlin. Gavin Harlin, the local Texan that we saw in our GoPro course preview, the 14-year-old, the youngest in this race. Maturity doesn't even come close to describing how quick and cool these youngsters are. 